So Albert Einstein was able to show that there exists a relationship between mass and energy. Two seemingly different concepts are actually very much connected. And this concept, this relationship, became known as the energy mass equivalence. And what he was able to show, in fact, is that mass is simply another form of energy in the same way that potential energy and kinetic energies are two different forms of the same concept, namely energy. Now, he was also able to derive a mathematical formula for this concept, for this energy mass equivalence, and he derived it from the kinetic energy of an object. Now I'm simply going to give you the end result, which is known as the rest mass energy of an object. And it's given by E equals mc squared, where m is the mass of our object in kilograms, c is simply the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. You square that and you find the energy in joules of any mass that is stationary, meaning it's not moving. So many different applications of this equation exist. Now let's look at the first application. There is a form of radioactive decay known as gamma radiation in which scientists were able to observe that if you combine an electron and a positron that their masses will combine and disappear and they will release electromagnetic radiation or light. And that means that this is in fact true because two objects, two solid objects, or not solid objects, but two objects with some mass combine and their mass disappears. And they release electromagnetic radiation in the form of light. So two particles with noticeable mass disappear producing electromagnetic radiation. And the amount of energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation produced can be found using this formula. Now a second type of application or example is the following. Now under lab conditions the reverse of this is true. It has been observed that if you take electromagnetic radiation you can in fact produce subatomic particles. Scientists were able to produce electrons from electromagnetic radiation. Now let's look at a third example of this formula. The sun is continually producing electromagnetic radiation, right, in the form of light that we receive on the earth. And that means that the mass of our sun is continually decreasing. So because the sun is continually producing this light, this electromagnetic radiation, it's releasing energy which is allowing the earth to sustain itself and this energy that is being released is decreasing the mass of the sun. So that means eventually the, sun mass, the sun's mass will in fact disappear. So let's examine the final type of example that deals with energy mass equivalence. So let's look at something called the mass defect. So let's suppose we want to create an atom, let's say a helium atom. And that means we need to combine two protons, two neutrons, and two electrons to form a neutrally charged helium atom. Now what must occur for this to form? Well these guys must all collide in a way to form this helium atom. So let's suppose our collisions occur, the two protons and two neutrons collide to form our nucleus composed of four nucleons and the two electrons are found orbiting our nucleus. Now let's calculate the mass before the collisions actually take place. So two protons have a mass of 2 times 1.0073 AMU. The two neutrons have a mass of 2 times 1.0087 AMU. And the two electrons have a mass of 2 times 0 0.0005 AMU. So we add these guys up and we see that our mass, our final mass is 4.033 AMU. Now what is the actual mass of helium measured experimentally. Well, we see that the mass of helium is 
4.003 AMU. So we see that there is a mass discrepancy. It seems like some of the mass is actually destroyed because if we take the difference of the two, we see that there's a discrepancy of 0.03 AMU. But remember, mass cannot be destroyed and that means it must go somewhere else. And this discrepancy, this difference in mass, is called a mass defect. This mass becomes energy according to this equation and this energy is the energy that holds the nucleons together. It's the energy that holds the two protons and two neutrons together in the nucleus. And if you want to find what this amount of energy is, we simply plug this guy into the mass and then we multiply it by the speed of light squared and we'll find the energy that holds our atom together, the energy that holds our nucleons in the nucleus together. And this energy is known as the binding energy or the mass defect energy.